Now we're going to get into linearization of functions. This is something that students have struggled with for many, many years. Uh, if you're taking the AP exam, it is something that is always on the AP exam. I don't think I can recall a year in which some kind of linearization problem was not on either the mechanics exam or the E&M exam or both. This is something that is almost always on AP physics exams and it's an important part of analyzing functions and analyzing physical relationships. So first of all, what is linearizing functions? It is simply graphing functions so they map as linear functions. What the heck does that mean? Uh, well, we'll see in a minute, but uh, one thing is that it's very easy to draw and model straight lines. It's really hard to draw a curve. To draw a straight line, all you need is a ruler. To draw a specific parabola, you'd need an infinite set of different parabolic templates. A straight line, all you need is a ruler. It works for every straight line. Uh, and it allows mathematical analysis by hand without a computer for very complex functions. So here's a complex function, y equals k times the square root of x. We can linearize this by instead of graphing y versus x, if we graph y squared versus x, notice all I've done is I've squared both sides of this relationship, y equals k times the square root of x, and what I get is y squared equals k squared, k is just a constant, k squared is just a new constant, times x. So this means that if I graph y squared versus x, I get a straight line with the slope being, see if you can guess, the slope of that y squared versus x graph would be in fact k squared. Let's look at the simple pendulum. So for the simple pendulum, uh, what I did was I did an experiment uh, uh, where I wanted to determine the relationship between the pendulum length and the period of the pendulum, the time for one full oscillation. So what I want to do with this data is I actually wanted to determine the local value of g, the gravitational field, also called the acceleration due to gravity. That's what I'm trying to determine by this experiment in addition to that specific relationship. Now in order to do this, what I had to do was take data. So here's a little fast forward motion of me taking some of this data right here. I just used a one liter bottle of water as a pendulum bob. It's almost exactly one kilogram. Measure the length of this rope. I time the period of 10 oscillations uh, and I just divide by 10 to get the period of oscillation. I've left out the uh, 10t value there so we can get to the point here. So this is the data that I got when I did my little experiment. So here are the steps to linearization. You ex measure the experimental data and graph it. I already, I've already measured that experimental data that I showed you right here, and all I did was I graphed on the vertical axis, my dependent variable, is the period of oscillation. On the horizontal axis, the independent variable was the length of the rope. So here's my graph, the period of the pendulum in seconds versus the length of the pendulum rope in meters. Now, the next step, once we've got that, is to, by inspection, and importantly, by using theoretical analysis, determine the type of relationship. Now, this graph that I've got here, um, it looks kind of like two different graphs that I had before. So one of them is, kind of looks like y equals kx plus c, but it kind of also looks like y equals to k times the square root of x. So I'm just gonna uh, replace this uh, dotted line with a uh, best fit curve here. Uh, there it is, that may help you a little bit in identifying this. So to me, it looks more like the one on the bottom. Although our graph clearly does not go through the origin, we're gonna deal with that later. Uh, so I chose that one, but we can't just trust that all my data was perfect. We do have to look at it in terms of theory as well. So what is the theoretical relationship between the period of a pendulum and the length of the pendulum? Well, here it is. T equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. You may, in fact, have to derive that relationship, but for now, I'm just going to give it to you. 
the period is 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by the value of the gravitational field or gravitational acceleration if you prefer. Uh, so there's my theoretical relationship. Now, does this work with this graph that I have that I've assumed is the relationship? Notice that I can rewrite it like this. T is 2 pi over the square root of G times the square root of L. So yes, in fact, that perfectly matches my model of Y equals K times the square root of X, where instead of Y, I've got T, the period of the pendulum. In instead of K, I've got 2 pi over the square root of G. And then instead of square root of X, I've got the square root of L. So in fact, it looks like I've chosen the correct relationship uh, to model this, this uh, experiment with. The next thing we want to do is to choose what quantities to plot. Importantly, we got to choose these such that the equation looks like y equals mx or y equals mx plus b. This is where the linearization occurs. It's all about choosing what quantities to plot. Now, here's my graph of the period versus the length. I do not want to plot t versus l. I've already done it right here. Uh, I don't want to use that for my linear analysis because that is not linear. I've got to figure out what can I plot, what quantities can I plot, so I will get a straight line when I plot them. Well, if you just look at this common pattern, y equals mx, I put it right under the equation above so you could see how the values or the quantities match up with this thing. I could, on the y-axis, graph t. I could, on the x-axis, graph what? You'd be right if you said graph the square root of l on the x-axis. And then what would my slope be in that case? Just look at this y equals mx. Well, you could see that you want to plot t versus square root of l. And there it is right there. Notice I do get a, a straight line when I do that. That's because t is linearly related to the square root of l, with the slope being what? Theoretically, the slope of this thing should be 2 pi over the square root of g. So I just simply chose to graph, instead of t versus l, I chose to graph t versus the square root of l. And then it completely maps perfectly to this equation, y equals mx. Now, there is a little caveat here. Uh, you want to express relationships for the ease of calculation and graphing. And there is a little bit of a problem with this relationship. It's not You could do it this way, like we just said. Uh, but it just so happens that um, square roots tend to be very difficult to calculate. Uh, that's true for people, and it's true for computers. Computers take a longer time to square, uh, calculate square roots than they do squares. Also, square rooted units are ugly. Do you want your units to be square root of kilograms or square root of meters, stuff like that? So often we, we prefer another approach. Uh, we simply, uh, as I mentioned before in the last video, you can express a square root relationship as a squared relationship, and here's how we do it. You take our original equation, you square both sides, and notice I've gotten rid of that square root. I'm going to rewrite it slightly so it maps better to my y equals mx. Now look at this. This actually is the preferred way to do it. We don't have any square roots to calculate. We don't have any units that have square roots in them. So we are going to plot in using this formulation of it, which is a little bit, a little bit easier actually. We're going to plot what, and what should the slope be theoretically? Take a look at this relationship, which again, all I've done is taken the theoretical relationship, squared both sides. Take a look at the relationship. What should I plot to get a straight line? And when I do that, what would the slope theoretically be equal to? Well, if you realize we have to plot what's where the y is, well, that's t squared. What's where the x is? That's l. So we just got to plot t squared versus l. And then the slope should be what? Look where that m is, the m for slope. 
the slope should just be 4 pi squared over g, theoretically. So this is, in fact, what we're going to do. Uh, so this step, again, you want to set it up so your values are easy for you to calculate because you're going to have to actually calculate quite a few of these. So notice when we take the t versus l graph and we instead transform that by squaring both sides of our theoretical relationship, and we plot t squared versus l, again, we get a perfectly linear relationship we're going to actually have to do some operations to our data set. And recall that uh, the relationship that we're using here is t squared equals some constant times l. So our data is, we've got length data and we've got period data, or t. But to graph this relationship, we need t squared. So here is my data set of length versus period. So what I need to do is, I've got to take all my period values and square them. So now I've got the length and the period squared. And I'm actually going to plot t squared, those period squared values, versus l. And I will graph that process data. And it should be a straight line. There it is. It is looking pretty linear. Now, you may have uh, noticed something about this here. Well, let's, let, we'll actually uh, discuss this in the next step. But it doesn't look like a direct relationship. Our theory says it should be direct, but it doesn't look direct. It looks linear, but not direct. We're going to deal with that. So what you do next is you determine the equation of the best fit line. Very important to do is to use your ruler to draw a best fit line. And when you take the slope, use points on the line, not data points. You never want to use data points to determine slope. And you also want to find the vertical intercept if there is one. And notice there is a vertical intercept. It's not zero here. Find those by inspection. Uh, you must not use any specific data points. You can't use data points to calculate values. You can't use data points to uh, find the slope either. Most of the rubrics for the AP exam will actually not give you any points if you just pick out a data point and try to calculate something from that, or if, even if you just use data points for slope. you got to use points on the line that are not data points. For example, uh, maybe here and here. Uh, you want points that are generally far away from each other. And do your slope calculation uh, so you can make sure that it's not based on any one data point or even two data points. It's based on your entire line of best fit. And I use the computer to determine the line of best fit here, but you need to be able to determine the equation of that line of best fit. Notice for the slope, I've left the units in there, as well as for the vertical intercept or the t squared intercept, I've left the units in there as well. We're going to leave off right there for now. See you in the next video.